So the volume of any sphere, right, with a radius here, in this case the problem is 5, but it's a radius r, is the following. 4 thirds times pi times r cubed. 4 thirds times pi r cubed. All right. So if you cover up the 4 thirds and the pi, you can see that the volume here is proportional to the radius cubed. So the radius is just a straight line from the center to the edge. So if you think about a cube that has three, you know, a, 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 literally a cube, which is a, you know, like a sugar cube or something, where each edge of it is, has a, a length r, then r cubed is r times r times r. That's the volume of some cube that has the uh, one side of it, or all three sides of it, the same length, in this case, five centimeters. You take that volume, multiply by pi, multiply 4, divided by 3, and that gives you the volume of the cube. Now, why is it 4 thirds pi r cubed? Why isn't it like 4 sevenths pi r cubed, and so on? So those are the questions that everyone has. Well, it turns out that we don't prove this here for you right now, because we actually need calculus to be able to show you that this is true. But using the laws and the rules of calculus, we can actually derive this and show that what we have on the board is the correct volume for a cube. Of course you can measure it, or the volume of a sphere. Of course we can measure it as well, but you get the idea. So if we want to figure out what the volume of uh, a sphere is, and in fact in this case the radius being 5 centimeters, we'd say the volume is 4 thirds times pi times r cubed, then we plug everything in. Now the way I'm going to write it is as follows. I'm going to put the 4 on the top times pi, I'm going to write it as 3.14, of course you know we're rounding it to two decimal places, and r in this case is 5, so I'm going to put it as 5 cubed, and then I'm going to write everything on the bottom uh, divided by 3. So you can write it like this, uh, 4 times pi times r cubed divided by 3, or you can leave it as 4 thirds times pi r cubed, it's exactly the same thing. All right. So what we have here is on the top 4 times 3.14 times 5 cubed is 5 times 5 times 5, and when you multiply that out you get 125, and then you divide that by 3. Now 4 times 3.14 uh, times 125 works out to be 1570, and then we still have to divide this by 3. And so the volume that we get when we take 1,570 and you divide that by 3, and we get 523.3 with a repeating bar. And what are the units? I measure this uh, radius in centimeters, and since this is a volume, it's going to be cubic centimeters. So 523.3, 523.3 with a repeating bar on the 3 cubic centimeters. That's how many little cubes each of a centimeter on each face would actually fit inside of this spherical shape. So all the problems are going to be the same. We're going to use this guy to calculate the volume. But again, in the back of your mind, I want you to, to remember, I've been telling you this over and over, to prove this is true, you kind of have to use calculus. To prove you know, uh, uh, the, the volume of a cone, similar thing, we say we use calculus. Surface area of a sphere, we use calculus. Hopefully you can start to see that calculus is pretty useful. We're not there yet, and it's not as hard as it sounds, I promise you that. But I'm trying to tell you this ahead of time because a lot of students really say, well, what is math even for? Who cares? I don't need it. Well, I mean, I'm telling you this thing is true, but without something like calculus, you actually can't prove it's true. So obviously it has use. I just guess I want to show you when I can some of the obvious uses of things. So problem number two. Same old story. We have a sphere radius is eight. The volume is four thirds times pi times r cubed. Now, I'm going to write it as 4 times 3.14 times the radius cubed, but the radius is 8, so it's 8 uh, cubed, like this. And it, on the bottom, I'm going to write that 3, because it's uh, divided by 3 there. And so, it's going to be 4 times 3.14. Now, this is 8 times 8 times 8, which works out to be 512. And you're dividing this by 3. Now on the top, 4 times 3.14 times 512 works out to be 6,430.72, and we're dividing this by 3. 6,430.72 divided by 3, and what we get is a final answer, 2,143.573 with a repeating bar on the 3, and it's in millimeters in this problem, so cubic millimeters. So. 
2,143.573 repeating bar cubic millimeters, or you can call it millimeters cubed, 2,143.573 bar. So you can see, same story, different day. We're just getting practice with it here. All right, the last problem of this set is gonna look a little different, but this one here is actually quite similar. We're gonna do the same sort of thing, the volume of any sphere, four thirds times pi r cubed. So we're gonna write this as four times 3.14 times r cubed, which is 10 cubed. And on the bottom, we're dividing by three because remember it's four thirds. So this is gonna be four times 3.14 times 10 times 10 times 10, which is 1000. And we're dividing this all by three. So on the top, four times 3.14 times 1000 works out to be 1000, I'm sorry, 12,560. And we're dividing this all by three. Now, when you take 12,560 divided by three, you get 4,186.6 with the repeating bar on the six. The units were meters here. So this is cubic meters since it's volume. So 4,186 decimal six repeating bar meters cubed. 4,186.6 repeating bar meters cubed. All right, I have one more. We'll do our last problem. All right, here, are, here is our last problem. Here, the radius is a weird situation. It's two times the cube root of two. So don't get worried if you see radicals and distances. These are just numbers. You can convert this to decimal if you wish. But of course, this is the exact value. Now, what's the volume of any sphere? It's 4 thirds times pi times r cubed. So that's 4 times pi, 3.14, times r cubed. But r is this crazy thing. So it's 2 times the cube root of two. So I'll put like two times cube root of two and uh, the whole thing is cubed because that's what the radius is cubed. Now we still have to divide by three. All right, so let's kind of take care of what we have on the end there. We have four times 3.14. Now over here, this exponent is gonna end up applying here and then it's gonna end up applying here. So we're gonna have two cubed uh, here, so I'll have two cubed, and I'm gonna uh, multiply that by what we have here, the cube root of two, also cubed. So these are multiplied, so you, mul you uh, make this cubed, and you make this cubed, and they're multiplied together. Now the neat thing about it is that whenever you apply a cube to a cube root, the cube and the cube root are opposite, so they cancel, just like the square and the square root are opposites. So they cancel as well. Don't forget the whole thing here is divided by three. So we have, four times 3.14 times two cubed, that's two times two times two, that's actually eight. And then the cube and the cube root cancel, leaving two behind. And then we're going to divide the whole thing by three. So four times 3.14 times eight times two works out to be, over here, I guess I'll do it over here, 200, uh, decimal 96, and then the whole thing is divided by three. So when you take 200.96 divided by three, you get a final volume of, 66.986 repeating bar, and we had millimeters here for the units, so this is cubic millimeters. So 66.986 repeating, 66.986 repeating, and it's cubic millimeters. So you see, every one of these problems was done in exactly the same way. Four thirds pi r cubed, it's just when the radius has a weird cube root in it, then we can do some simplification because we know how to handle cube roots and how the opposite of a cube root is a cubing operation, just like the opposite of a square is a square root and so on. So I'd like you to practice all of these. When you feel like you understand how to find the volume of a sphere, follow me on to part two. We'll wrap up the concept of the volume of a sphere. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.